Welcome, guys, to the Touchline Podcast, episode 75. And you know the drill. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video on this channel. And we've got two things I want to mention. First of all, how was that day with Jared Sutton on, yeah, on how Friday? Was it, how, was it? how was it? How was it? How was it? How was it? Just explain that a bit. Did you... Did you no, nah, I've never. Did you, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking did about. You, like, did you go to third I base? The, I was actually watching the video. Um, but did you go to third base? No, I didn't go to third base. Uh, <laughs> Lying's bad. Lying's bad. Oh, no, it's gone. <laughs> I don't know. Bad, Lying's bad. Sure. But yeah. how was the day in general? What did you like, talk about? What did you eat? What did you do? What did you talk about? All the bad calls he's been, <laughs> yeah. he's been having. What, what, did you talk about the, the biased opinions he has against the dogs? Or? And the Good Friday moments. Yeah, no, I, think surely, so I think it was against us uh, the whole way from the beginning to the end. So I said, how come you've done so a dirty job on us? Yeah, what did he say? And what I asked him, what, what, what did you uh, let Latrell Mitchell bloody knee Joshua Adekar in the, bloody, uh, in the body? What did he say? He didn't say nothing. Did he make and up I was losing and I just- Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Is he alive? Oh yeah, oh, wait. Is I it? Think it's dead. Did you? Did you do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think. It's hey, you're on video now. <laughs> he's not reffing this week. Uh? He's not reffing this week. I know because he's injured. <laughs> how, do we, how, do we, how do we know Bashara didn't <laughs> off him? Fox Sports yeah. gonna like release uh, news about Joe Sutton missing. Breaking news: Anthony Bashara's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two now. No, Sky, did, yeah, did you, did you invite him to skydiving if he didn't right. off him? Did I want to invite him? But, did you, uh, but, but anyways, that, that's my segue. That's my transition. <laughs> now, we, now Bashara's got skydiving this week. Yeah. Uh, Saturday the 18th, man. Um, time has come. Time has come. I can't wait for it, man. I was just watching, hey, I was telling you off camera. Um, uh, so about just the, give me that. What happened? Oh, yeah. Keep nah, going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Nah, I was just saying. Um, <laughs> guys, yeah, keep going, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Everyone's just bloody cutting off. So go, skydiving, talk yeah, about so how you feeling. I feel really good, man. I'm actually excited to do it. Um, I was watching a few videos today after work. Uh, I was just watching like two vlog videos or a couple of videos. It doesn't look that bad, man, to be honest. <laughs> it doesn't seem that bad. But, while watching it. But look, to be honest, like once you're up there, yeah. you're looking down like it's going to hit. Oh, uh, not really, man. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Surely it nah, does. No, nah, you know what? When you jump out of that plane, bro, you just want to get it out of your way. But like you'll see the view like, like from the, the, the adrenaline's gonna be pumping. Oh, no, really. <laughs> no, not really. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're like, he's gonna tell the pilot, he's gonna tell the pilot. Not about no, that. No, 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 it's not about you can be not being scared, but adrenaline that's the can be no, it, it, it is it, like everyone does it. Like, I know everyone feels that feeling for it. Adrenaline doesn't need to be nervous, it could be like it might kick in, but you know what? In my mindset, saying, you know what, you got this, like, you can do it. That's right. I reckon if I can do it, you all can do it. I reckon you're gonna tell the pilot to land before you jump. Nah, not really, man. Get me down. No, no, not really. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, now, just final question. Oh. Which lot in Rookwood do you want? <laughs> I told you what I said. <laughs> Which one? It's a genuine it? question. <laughs> Say it after <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mock no, anyone, no, no. but it's just, bro, we were just- No, no, we're playing, we're playing, we're playing. You're going to, you're going to hope, hopefully, hopefully, the hopefully the that parachute no, releases. No, for the best. No, I can't. Anyways, but. Anyways, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good start. Um, let's start now with the round 10 review. First of all, Bulldogs and Panthers, man. That was a good game. Um, we put a fight. Anthony wasn't with us during the game, but... Um, Score was 16-10. 16-10. What I'm... Before we talk about the performance, I'm actually... I feel the Bulldogs have been disrespected a bit. Yeah. I think no one's talking about how this Bulldogs team has just lost 16-10 to this Panthers team. Yeah. No one's talking about it. It's just gone quiet. The That's first right. half, um, when the first half was done, um, my mate was telling me that all the commentators were thinking about is clear. They want to talk about the Bulldogs and how good they've been defensively. Yeah. No one's talking about it. Like this Bulldogs team would have got smashed last year. This Bulldogs team, you know, after two tries would have just collapsed. Yeah. No one's talking about how far Bulldogs have come. No one's actually even saying that Bulldogs are a massive shout for top eight after that performance. Like yeah. it's all gone down under the all radar. Right. What's, no what's bigger news, it. Nathan Cleary getting injured or the Bulldogs performance? Now, of course, Nathan Cleary getting injured is a massive, massive blow to Panthers. And yeah. of course that's going to be the headline. But even after the match, you like you, you know you had your time to speak about Cleary, but at least acknowledge how good the Bulldogs were. I just had a problem with that. I just feel, you know, that Nathan Cleary headline took over everything, but 
Mm. They didn't give props to the Bulldogs. Like you look at 16 10, bro. Panthers had two, two tries. Two tries. Two Panthers, tries. two tries. It just shows how far we've come as a club. But yeah. a lot of people are saying because Nathan Cleary wasn't there in the second half. I don't. Yeah, because he got yeah, injured. Oh, in look, the first you can make an you argument. Can make an argument because yeah. yeah. Cleary is the best halfback yeah. in the game, yeah. and he, he controls everything in the attack. But, but Dogs' yeah. performance defensively, yeah. now currently we're the third best defense in the league. That's really good. We, which is crazy. Attack is still a massive, massive problem. Yeah. And I feel Hutchinson did have a much better game. I think it's been his best in a Bulldogs jersey in a while since he's joined the club. Yeah. But I feel if our tech wants to click, if we want to score more points, we need yeah. a proper number seven. That's going to affect us this year. I think it is. Because he, 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 like again, his kicking game was good, but you, I, there was this, me and Samuel looking at the stats during the day. He's had the most missed tackles and he, out of all the current halfbacks playing, he's got one of the least kicks in the game. Yeah. So it just shows a halfback has to take control. Mm. He has to make kicks and he, he's not producing that and at the moment, and which yeah. is a big concern. Even people say that he's allowing Burden to play, but no. remember when Sexton came in, how good yeah. was Burden? Burden? Burden had a poor start to the season, but yeah. once Sexton came in, they Sexton was in, doing yeah. all the kicking, the controlling, Burden was playing his running game. Yeah, exactly. And Bill's got the stats there. Our stats, yeah. we dominated. Pen. See, not see, dominate, no, no, it was 50-50. We it was yeah. Possession was 50-50. Um, completion. Even, yeah. Nah, bro, it's not even. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, completion rate, 78 to doggy, 75. Um, we both Luke. made 12, 12, 12 and 12 errors. Luke close, man. So like, it, was, it was straight through the, the penalty middle. penalty count was a big... Uh, the, so the penalty count was... Uh, so missed tackles was a big thing for yeah. us. We had yeah. 54, that yeah. 33. Mm. Penalties conceded, 9 to 3. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Where we, um, that's where we lacked. Look, they, they, look, dogs played very good. We had the defensive first half. I had no complaints about it, but the attack, how you said, they just need to adjust a little bit. It's okay because, like, it's only a loss after we've won two games. Yeah, and, and, right. and to be fair, we went over that line twice in that first yeah, half. Exactly. Which was like, good. Go our way. The Kareem mentioned the Kira's the one debatable. That, that was a try yeah. for me. Yeah. The Kareem one? Watch it again, the, the, the forward pass? Yeah. No, no, no. The one where he. Caught the ball up in the air and then he fell down. He rolled over, so the tackle broke and he's oh, oh the double, elbowed, the double movement. Yeah, and he's elbowed in touch the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I already watched that's it. A that, that's a try. Not only that, he wasn't even properly held yet. Yeah, so yeah. it was it was both momentum. Both Panthers players yeah. lost yeah. control of the yeah. tackle. I think offloads it, Croydon scores, and that would have changed yeah. the game completely. I think that what the NRL should do in that position. He scored the try to send it to Bunker, review it, because they yeah. instantly said, no, hold up. Uh, look, I don't know, man. Look, Panthers, I want to quickly talk about them. For me, I think they were in second gear. Even when Cleary was there, they just, it wasn't the Panthers I've seen over the years. It yeah. just, they're just <coughs> so professional. They know how to win games comfortably <coughs> without putting uh, too much effort into it. It, it. it just, they're so good at the moment. And poor sides about the Bulldogs winning it this year. I honestly think they're the strongest team this year. When they're not, it's not their day, they're still winning games. Mm. And it, it just, they're going to po possibly win it. Yeah. This year. I, I just think the Bulldogs made it hard for them. I think, I think they so. were trying to they were trying to play their their best, but I just think again, you remember how we said we were in their faces? Yeah, I think that's they what were made it in the first half. Yeah, that's what yeah. made it hard for them. But look, positive signs for Bulldogs. We head over signs. to Magic Round next week. But yeah, good signs for the dogs. Now, right now. Dragons <laughs> defeated Rabbitohs twenty eight to fourteen. Yeah, what a uh, cracker game, man. Yeah, yeah. Mitchell yeah. Mitchell's game. Bad. You couldn't yeah. you couldn't say dragons are hitting form because it is Rabbitohs. Yeah, you're right. But no, it was it was a good game. It was a good game. Uh Again, that's what we've we the difference with Dragons this year is that they know how to bounce back from a defeat. Because last year they would have been conceding and keep on losing, and that's what I like about this Dragons team. Yeah. And you look at Latron Mitchell; I think he performed well, got two, two tries. tries and a try assist. Yeah. And he was a, I wouldn't say he was very good, but again, when you get two tries and a try assist, it yeah. makes it a good game. So it does, yeah. Dragons again. I think they're going to keep improving, keep on getting better. There's going to be a few wins, few losses on the way. Yeah. But yeah, Dragons, I think it was a very comfortable win. Rabbitohs did take the lead. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And then, yeah, Dragons just took control with the Zach Lomax try. Yeah, nothing much really. Dragons just, re they're looking good at the moment. Yeah, Ben Hunt um, had a good game. Um, kicking him again, he's always on point. Yeah. Um, and that's allowing, I feel, Kyle Flanagan because he's got that experienced halfback on his side. Kyle Flanagan's been playing good recently. And yeah, it's... Again, I feel the same story with Dragons as Chabelle said. Um, when they're losing, they're losing <coughs> big time. Yeah. But when they're winning, they're scoring a lot of points. So it, it's positive signs for the Dragons. Um, but the Rabbitohs, again, they look very they look deflated, very, yeah. very poor. No style at all. Like This is like a, prop, a team that's low on confidence. Like, this is like, I remember Bulldogs, exactly that's how they're playing. Yeah. You know, it just... It's not acceptable, especially if you're a Rabbitohs fan. Like Rabbitohs are supposed to be up there as the the, the biggest team in the comp. Like top four, yeah. Right now they can't attack. They can't, they defend. can't defend. Yeah, they it, just it, look it very weak. It's just a horror show right I now. I think that. 
the fa- um because of the injuries, I think that's why they're struggling. Yeah. yeah. I think even if their their plays were there, I think that was. I still think they struggle. would still not, I think, struggle, but I think they'll be in a much better position. So I think with the injuries, it's really impacted them and their performances this year. Yeah, no. but what about, what about Jaden Sua from Dragons, bro? Yeah, he's he's he he played very good. He's getting much better every single day. And that was like, his former club, too. He uh, scored a try. South South yeah. He played for Dragons. Um, it, sorry, Rabbitohs. Rabbitohs. So to be honest, he's been up there as the best edge in the game. Yeah. Yeah. My game. <laughs> Your voice yeah, got no, you right. right, yeah. Um, but yeah, Dragons, man, they start. <laughs> again, it's like. Two steps, they make two steps forward and then they go take one step back. You yeah. know, that they were on form until that Roosters game, 60 to 18 or something. They got demolished, yeah. ruined their confidence, but a win like this puts them back up. I so think Dragons yeah. will miss the eight this year because of that. Maybe, They're yeah. going to lose and win. Yeah, yeah. Next year, for sure, they'll make the top eight. Oh, 100%. But I wanted to ask, like, the way how South Sydney have been playing, like, like this, the last 10, 11 rounds, literally. They Not haven't they haven't even won a game yet. They beat they've us, won one, of course. Oh, they've only won they one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. Did you forget? Um, Did you talk about that? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I'm just saying the way how they've been performing, it's been like very weak with attack is not the best. Mm. Um, the defense is not the best too. Yeah. So <laughs> what's the best strategy for them to get back up to, to get, have a better performance and to get more wins? And plus their coaching as well. They only got well, Ben Hornsby Rabbitos, as the interim coach. Rabbitohs you know? need a big win. I they think need they a need a massive win, win and yeah. it's going to boost a, a lot of confidence within themselves. And that's what they're missing. Yeah. Right I now. think they just need a seven. Need I a seven and a new liking. coach, but who's going to be coaching their that, club? That'll ben will be Wayne the Benner might be. Wayne Benner might hop in, but um, next game. Ooh, next yeah, game. Next game, Melbourne. Sharks. Well. Uh, well. Sharks defeated Melbourne now. 25 to 18. Mm. Um, in their backyard, even. Um, I'm still not saying contenders yet. No, nah, still. Not yet, not I'm yet. not still saying it. I know they didn't have Hines and I know Melbourne didn't have Pappenhaus and then Hughes. I'm still not calling them um, contenders, but that was a big win. We'll see this week. Yeah, exactly. this week is a big task because their magic round record is atrocious, yeah, just like the dogs. Is. But I think they're stepping closer to becoming contenders. I think that performance was good, Domino. You could just see Sharks wanted it more than um, Melbourne, Melbourne Storm. Yeah. And especially without Hind, you, you expect, especially it's at Amy Park, you would expect them to lose. And their record, they haven't lost their since uh, Bulldogs, I think, last year. So that's, that's right, quite yeah. impressive to do that without Nico Hines. It's incredible. And it just shows they, they could come a long way this year. Yeah, and look, with Cronulla, um, <laughs> I said if... I know they've got like a tough run, like these next six games. I said if they can win more than they lose yeah. in their sixth run, then they'll be contenders. But as I said... Yeah. They're playing good. Like their defense is very solid. They've got again one of the best in no, the they, comp. They have the best. They have the yeah. best. Yeah, they have yeah. the best in the comp right now. And again, I know they were missing Hines, and I know, as I said, Melbourne were missing their two key players. Yeah. So you could say it's even, and they got over the line at Amy Park. And um, just the way Cameron McInnes, like he he was phenomenal. The, the the hard work he puts. You always need that player that's gonna yeah make tackles nonstop, play eighty minutes, and put hard work because they're the ones that. People fail to to see how good they are. Like oh, he makes sure. a big impact. Their yeah. forward pack is why they're succeeding yeah. for me. McKenna's, yeah. you've got um, Wilton, Wilton, Hazelton, Nakura, Kafusi, well. so, yeah, Kafusi, yeah. yeah. Talakai is now playing in the lot yeah. of the, yeah. the forward pack. So yeah. it, they've got a, a young, good team, yeah. experienced team that's developed in the last three years under Fitzgibbon. So yeah. yeah, Sharks, they're looking good, and Melbourne still. Again, I put them top two in the prediction yeah, video we yeah. did. But again, I'm not impressed with their performances lately. Mm. They're honestly scraping wins and yeah. their performances haven't been yeah, like contenders yeah, yeah. You contenders level, whatever you say. Um, with with uh, Melbourne and Cronulla's game, because I was watching the whole thing, I wasn't um, happy about Cavusi's try when he actually... Um, oh, when he went... Yeah, I yeah. think that was a drop ball for sure when he knocked that... Oh, the the yeah. one, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I think that was a knock on clearly. Like Look, it if was. you give it's Cur- yeah. Curacao a yeah. knock on, see that incident that happened you last time, yeah. then you have to say then that's probably a knock on. And, and he was full confident about that and try, but the way how they kept review, review uh, reviewing, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> yeah. I can't even say yeah, reviewing yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the the what's that? The, the try, try. Yeah. it wasn't a try. Look, I, I, I find it was a lost ball that, to be honest. It, it could, the call could went either way, and again, that's the problem with the referees right now. One call goes like that, one call goes like that. There's no definite answer. So yeah. it's basically whoever's in the bunker system, it's how they interpret yeah. it. Because right now yeah. there's no solid yeah, answer. Talk about I was, yeah, I was going to say Daniel Atkinson, um, he played very good. Very good. But yeah. there was one thing that everyone knew what happened on that field, but we're going to get to that topic. Um, yeah, we'll oh, yeah, we'll talk about that, that, that later. Was, yeah. That was bad. That call. was uh, like disgusting. The worst call ever. That Just was the worst call of all time. Proves Gus's point. 
Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll delve into that very yeah. soon. Um, finally, uh, Sydney Roosters and the Warriors. Another eight eighteen. Yeah, another. Joey Big called it. Scoring, Joey yeah. did call it three weeks ago. Yeah, he that said this they're going to bounce. Bring up. Roosters to where they want to be after St George's. Uh, yeah, that performance. Yeah. incredible. And last week's they've game scored well. now a hundred and thirty-two points in three That's games cra- in three weeks, and bro. they've That's got crazy. the best attack in the game right now. Wow, they're playing good right now. Warriors, man. Sean Johnson, what's, what's happened to him, man? What's I think Warriors going back the way they always like back on the bottom eight, as in like they always stay 13, 12 spot, yeah, eleven yeah. spot. It's weird because last <laughs> last, last year they were on year fire. that was so good. I don't, yeah. Nothing's really changed within their team. It, it's only gotten better. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's only gotten better, and I just think maybe it's because I don't. It's maybe because th- there's. Better teams now in the competition, each team gr- like grown. Maybe yeah. because of how good they were, they didn't change anything heading into this year. And other teams have found out how they played. There's many reasons why Warriors could be going I don't wrong. even think they've been bad this year. It's, the unlucky. results are not going their way. I think they've been very unlucky this year. Like th- They still play the same. I think Sean Johnson has had He's a pretty good, decent yeah. this year. Yeah. Tor Harris, Vanua Blake, they, they still have a good team. And I feel they have been performing... Um, to some extent this year, but I don't know, something's missing in, the, in this something's team, which wrong. I'm not like, sure. Something's not like clicking properly, you know what I mean? Because I think that's three losses in a row. Four yeah. losses or something Three, four like losses, that. bro. That's they, really bad. They need a big win. Five cause if, yeah. if it wasn't for that draw against Manly. Yeah. Because how, yeah. Because how you said it last year, they had a better, like they had a mad run last year, winning every game Perfect, as well. Yeah. I, the, I know they had a couple of losses too, but yeah. they had the best attack, the best defense as well. But this year was just a bit, yeah, um, well, a miss, unfortunate like, they, it's really they, bad. they got hardworking players, which yeah, I do. admire about Warriors. They've always had known for a hardworking team. I think they need to imp- fix their defense. I think that's yeah. what's letting them. You look at last year. I think defensively they were good, and yeah. attack, attack they're always going to be good. They've got great attacking players, but if they can fix their defense in the next four to five weeks, I think that can help them get get them back on um, back on top in, into the top eight. So yeah. that's what they're missing for me. Defense is yeah. a problem. Roosters, man, like. Angus Crichton, he's been on fire. Yeah, he's his last three games, he's pulled double four, try as well. Four, five tries. So yeah, look, five past tries, three yeah. games, he scored five tries, and he's putting his hand up for Origin. Last week right against now Brisbane, and now this week against, and uh, against Warri- and Warriors. And he scored well. one against the Dragons. And right. Dominic Young as well, double this try as well. This is like yeah, Roosters of old. The, yeah. the way they're attacking, it's very very scary. But I can see that worry. Uh, I mean, the Roosters are improving, and I know where they're heading to for the finals, like very soon. But I can see, look, I, I don't want to go off topic, but I know dogs will make top eight yeah. for sure. And I can see either Roosters or dogs in the grand final again. It Good brings back um, 20 um, years. history. Uh, 20, 20 years. That would yeah. be a mad grand well, final. That would be a mad one. What's good about Roosters, Roosters this year is I don't think they're relying on individual players yeah. to really step up. I, I feel in the last two years, they've relied too much on Tedesco to step they up. Did, yeah. When he doesn't perform or even Manu, they seem to the crumble, but this year when Tedesco or Manu isn't playing well, you look at Sam Walker, he stepped up. He developing. actually did. Sam Walker's uh, playing better. Connor Watson is yeah. playing good. Crichton, so they're really playing as a team. And, and it was a good move for Connor Watson coming from Newcastle back to, to Roosters, Roosters yeah. again. That's his home team. Like. Now, this is, he's finally hit his form right 100%. now. 100%. Because he's been playing hooker lately, and I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's his position. And, and, and they know what play. their role is, because yeah. I think yeah. what Trent Robertson's saying to the players, you just what you just have to do what you have to do for your roles. Mm. You have got to stay that way. But you better hope they don't fall off mid year. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. That, that happened yeah. last year. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last year they went off balance and they just and they had injuries. There's a common trend with Roosters. They're very inconsistent. Like we saw at the start of the season, everyone saying, "Oh, they're the the real deal," but then they fell off again. They picked it up. Yeah. And again, what Bill said, it's about being consistent and you know staying there. So I don't know. I feel. It's a different Roosters um, yeah, it, what I'm seeing on it, the field. It, it feels different right now. Um, but yeah, that's a wrap up to the round 10 review. Now, boys, let's move on to round 11 tips. This week's who you got is South uh, South Sydney Rabbitohs and the North Queensland Cowboys. And for the guests, let me look at, let's go through the ranking for this week yep. for league standings after round 10. Uh, in first is myself. I got five total tips in round nine with a total of 47. Uh, in second, guests got four tips. So last week we had official fan page. Yeah. Uh, Bulldogs and then down a total of 46 uh, Samuel got 4 as well 45 total uh, Anthony only got 3 so which is not bad 
Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, 43 total points and Bill had a, t- a terrible one. <laughs> two total tips. I had a shocker. In round nine and he's on 42 um, tips. Uh, I, was, I, was tipping, I was tipping the underdogs. The, the underdogs this year. That's, that's, that's what I was doing last and week. And this week, the special guest for the Touchline Tips is BKR Sport. Shout out, Shout BKR. out to him. Make sure you go subscribe to his channel. Shout he does out. a lot of great NRL content and he's a Titans fan. So make, a make sure you subscribe. Like, great yeah. vlogs. His vlogs are very yeah. good. His vlogs yeah. are amazing. Very, very passionate. Just like us, we're passionate. He's the OG in the game. Yeah, he's that's been it. Doing those videos. Yeah. Yeah, he's, been those, he's been doing those videos for years, man. Oh, I can tell Credit to him, bro. He, he travels everywhere oh, for Titans, And that too, man. He puts that, the hard that's yards, bro. Right? Yeah. puts all bro. the effort in. You know? That's incredible, that's, man. That's what you call That's what you have to do. That's what you call a true fan. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, well, he's the guest this week, and we'll start off with the tips. All right, so first game, Magic Round. Um, Friday night, Raiders versus Dogs. I'm, I'm sick with Dogs. Me too. I'm yeah. sick with Dogs. 1 to 12. I think we should be a bit cautious, dogs. Yeah. Our record in Magic Round is bad. Yeah, it is horrible. Yeah. I know we've improved. It's a different Bulldogs this year, but we have to be cautious. We haven't won in Magic Round. Yeah, we, we haven't won in Magic the Round. The last, like, three, four No, no, years. we haven't no, won ever. literally. Like, no, yeah, in the last won. yeah, last three rounds, we've got two nights and Raiders. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I've tipped um, Bulldogs. Uh, I've tipped Dogs. Yeah. Dogs yeah. as well. And Big House Sport is tipping the Mighty Dogs. Beautiful. That's it. That's Next it. game, um, 8 o'clock, Manly versus Brisbane. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Brisbane. They had a very good performance against Parramatta. Yeah. They dominated. Oh, yeah. Ezra, um, Reese Walsh, they played so good. But, pa- uh, pa- I mean, mainly um, they struggled a bit. Turbo's, Turbo's out. out. Turbo's out. That, that's very unfortunate. And uh, Jason Saab as well. Yeah. yeah. He torn his, uh, I think his peck, peck, yeah. peck injury as well. Could we see the downfall mainly again? Maybe. He could, could fall out of the top gonna, eight. And that's yeah. going to affect Tom Jovojevic that he won't play um, Origin, Origin now, as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of main players so that are going to be... I'm tipping Broncos. Yeah. 30 plus. I think Suncorp, Magic Round, yeah. Broncos. Brisbane home yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, Broncos. Broncos and uh, Beaker Sport is actually going mainly. Oh, well. So he's got the underdog. The underdog this I want to know, know the reasoning behind uh, it. He put the reasoning on the um. He goes, I just think they're due a win because they won. Yeah, okay. that's what he said. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, it could be could be right. Yeah, it could, yeah, they could yeah. go in. They got some good players. Next game, Anthony. Um, Titans versus Knights. Newcastle Knights. Look, I'm sorry, BKR Sport. I just because of Kieran Thorne's injury and AJ Brimson, I have to go Knights. Yeah, it was them in the team because yeah. they they control the team, and they have helped Titans get their victories in the last few weeks. So without yeah. them, I think they're gonna struggle. Yeah. So I go Knights. Uh, yeah, I'm going Knights too. I think I'm gonna go Newcastle. Yeah, as well. sorry, sorry, I'm gonna go Knights. Yeah. <laughs> and I just feel like they're, they're too strong for the yeah. Titans. I, I feel we dogged him. They start do- to get better as we well. We dogged him, man. You yeah, know they're playing better without Ponga. Ponga is just when he's there, they're always like they don't know what to their do. wins have been gritty. Yeah, I don't think is. they. Maybe I, I don't think they play better without him, but again, yeah. they're still doing good without him. Big yeah. house sport, of course, Titans. Titans. Yep. Um, next game, we got Cronulla versus Roosters. That's a big, 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 ca- big clash. Big clash that one. For uh, both, teams, both teams. To yeah. really show who's the real I contender. Don't know. This is a 50 50 uh, game. Hines will, Hines will be just, back. Yeah, I'm going Roosters because of Sharks' record at Magic Round. That oh, yeah, la- yeah, yeah. Remember last year Dolphins they got last smashed year by Dolphins and Raiders yeah. the year before. And, that were, and don't forget, R- Sharks were on good form. Yeah. So I'm going Roosters just for that reason. And Roosters are on form too. Uh, both, think, yeah. both teams are playing good. Yeah, they but are. I don't know. I feel Roosters have... Again, Sharks beat Melbourne, bro. That's going to give them heaps of confidence heading into and this Sharks game. Sharks still first on the ladder. But so. again, Roosters, it's going to be a very low scoring game for me. Two good defensive team, good, two good know. attacking team. I think <laughs> Roosters will edge this. Well, what do you think, Bill? <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think Roosters will take yeah. it. Um, yeah, they'll expose Sharks for the pretenders they are. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to go Roosters as well. 13 plus. Okay. Uh, BKL Sport, another underdog. Would you say underdog Sharks? No. Nah. Are they the favourite? No, nah, oh, Roosters, Roosters are, are the favourites. Favorite. Roosters so are then, 65. But it's not so an underdog. <laughs> so they're not the favourite. So Still. yeah, he's going Sharks. <laughs> Next game, Anthony. Um, the who you got round. So okay, South we'll Sydney and right. Cowboys. Okay. Um, this week's who you got is, yeah, Rabbitohs and um, the Cowboys. I've gone Cowboys to win 26-22. Close game, there. Yeah. Um, I got uh, cow, uh, Cowboys 28 14. 28 14. Okay. I've went 24 25 Cowboys. So golden point. Golden, golden point. point. Okay. And yeah, I've gone 16 20 Cowboys. 16 20. That's okay. Cool. Um, anytime try scorer, I've went Jeremiah Nanai. So, but he's on eight tries and he's one behind top and he's a uh, second edge. row and edge. So that's yeah. an interesting statement for an edge. He he's good player. Up there as the top try scorer right now. So yeah, yeah I've won Jeremiah and, uh, and uh, any time try scorer. Um, I went for Tom Dillon. Yep, that's yeah, good. he's a good player. As well, Who did yeah. I go? Oh, I went Latrell Mitchell. That's yeah, right. Went Latrell. Went Latrell. Yeah, any time. What about you, Bill? Uh, Scott, drink water. Scott, drink Scott water. Drink water. Yeah. Uh, first try scorer, I went Valentine Holmes. Same here, Valentine Holmes. All. And I went, Shabba went Cody Walker. Cody Walker, yeah. And yeah, and Bill. I went uh, Wyden. Jack Wyden. Uh, man of the match, I'm going Ruben Cotter. I'm going to go Scott Drinkwater.
Scott John Owen Corder as well. Shabon Corder. Corder. I didn't. Didn't. Okay, and finally, um, my favourite one, bold prediction. I went Ruben Cotter, one try and one try assist. Yeah, that's, um, that's I'm one. saying Cowboys leading half time 14 0. Okay, Shabell. I can't. Oh, sorry. sorry. Shabell went Latron Mitchell Simbin. Yeah. yeah oh, <laughs> I was actually going to put that before Bill? I said And that. then I went, uh, <laughs> nobody to score in the second half until 20 minutes. Yeah, that's, that's actually nice. Yeah. And, anyways, yep, that's a wrap up to our Who You Got for this week. And BKR Sport, um, here tip Cowboys, Cowboys for this Cowboys. week. Yeah. All right, next game we got Warriors and Penrith. I'm just going to say it, Penrith. Panthers, Penrith. yeah. yeah Penrith both halfbacks, um, Sean Johnson is injured, out. Yeah. Injured, yeah. most likely he's out torn peck. And Cleary's out too. Cleary's out too. So who replaces uh, him, Jack Cogger? Or? Even yeah, Cogger. Schneider, Schneider's, Schneider's out. Oh, Schneider's oh, out, out too. Yeah, he's he's oh, done his uh, ACL. Everyone's getting injured. It's, yeah. uh, this is actually... Gra- um, the referee yeah. that... Um, I think Graham Ainsley, when he comes out reviews, he's saying yeah. because of the quick pace of the NRL right now, the rules they've put, that's why there's injuries so... Maybe they start to not slow it down, but just to make sure these injuries don't happen. Yeah. Cause it's it's a lot but this year. Yeah, so if Schneider's out and Cogger comes in, Cogger, no, Cogger comes he's in. at Knights. Yeah, yeah. Um, it depends. So, so who? They'll get another one uh, from the maybe so from the New South Wales yeah. State Cup for sure. Inclu- all of us, including BKL Sports, going Panthers. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, next game, Storm <laughs> versus Parramatta. Easy. It'll be close. Oh, uh, not really, because you got no um, Moses, Tim Gufferson and no, no Mitchell they're Moses. They're still out, yeah. They're still but out. I, to be honest, I think they did well against the Broncos last yeah. week. I think they, w- they uh, weren't that bad. They weren't, they weren't that, that bad, bad, but it was but close sh- for a certain period yeah, of time yeah. until but Broncos had started down, scoring yeah. again. The Eels' problem is their defence right now. Exactly. Terrible. Um, this is the worst Eels have been in years, yeah. um, but I'll go Melbourne. I think Melbourne. Melbourne, they played good on the weekend against Cronulla, but I think they just fell short. They just fell too short, yeah. So, but I'm sticking with Melbourne. 30 plus. Yeah, I'm going to go Melbourne. Yeah. Melbourne yeah. and Big Cosmo in Melbourne as well. Uh, last game. Uh, last game uh, of the Magic Round, Tigers and Dolphins. I think Dolphins, they had a good performance. Dolphins are looking good, They man. are in four, man. They're looking yeah. good, I'm man. going Dolphins... No, I'll, I'll just say Dolphins. That's I it. went Dolphins, uh, Big Cosmo and Dolphins. And I'm going Tigers. <laughs> you back your team, Tigers. I'm, I'm going Tigers. I, I I'm going Dolphins, man. Dolphins, 30 plus. No. Plus game, man. Trust me, d- Tigers. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll anyways, see. that's show a wrap the up to uh, the round 11 tips and, uh, of course, round 10 review. Uh, now, boys, we mentioned about these injuries that have been occurring. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Cleary, um, he's out for eight weeks and he's probably missing game one and game two of Origin. That's a big blow. Massive yeah. blow for Panthers, but a massive blow for the, the Blues. So, yeah. Anthony, what do you reckon about it? Yeah, like, like how we just said it now, like about with these halfbacks, with Nathan Cleary, Sean Johnson, Sean Johnson Hines, Hines, Nico Hines, Mitchell Moses, Mitchell Moses, Moses oh my God. all these New South Wales players like all getting injured. I, don't know, it's, I think it's very frustrating. Yeah, Adam Reynolds. And, yeah, Reynolds as well. Forgot about that too. Um, I don't know what's going on, but it, look, it just happens for a reason, you know. But there is replacements um, that will take the spot. Um I would say I don't who know. would be your halves combination right now. See, see, that's a big question mark. Man. I don't know who. I don't know who's going to take that spot. Look, there, there's a lot of opportunities that can take the spot. They're saying Daniel Atkinson can take it. He's a young bloke. No, no, no man. He's too, oh, he's too young. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Matt, Matt Burden will be there. Yeah, I, I think Matt Burden yeah, for sure. Yeah. Look for me. I think Matt Burden Burden's has been be very there. good this year. He's been he in started form. the season a bit slow, but oh, I think he's, he's really up. picked up, and I think he's I the best solution for five. Apparently, apparently, Gus is like it's going to shock the league. Like who, they, who they've selected. Oh, who they selected. Yeah. 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 Wow. Because uh, Look, Matt Mag- uh, Michael Maguire is actually like... I think Burden yeah, will get it. Up. I think I, will. if you haven't actually watched the My State of Origin starting 11 for game one, make yeah. sure you go watch it. was released a couple of days ago. But I said, look, why we need a change. It's a new era for New South Wales. So I think yeah. it's important Burden starts. New coach starts, as well. Yeah. New coach as well. And I think for halfback for game one, it has to be Hines. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He's been working for this moment, man. Didn't he get a bit of an injury on the yeah, weekend? He yeah, did but a calf injury. He yeah. should be, he's my, it's a minor, it's a minor injury. Look, he's, he should be good for the Origin. If Hines is free, yeah. I go Hines Burden. Yeah. If he's not free and he's going to be out for Origin, no, I'd go I don't know who I'm putting. Burden six. There's rumours Moses might be back. Yeah, this round. Mitchell yeah. Moses might be back. Wow. Uh, by the time this is uploaded, we know. It, yeah, he might be. Still, I don't I don't, I'm not impressed by if, him. If I think if he's coming back from an injury, is Origin the right place to bring it's him not, in? Not, yeah. nah, not for uh, game one. Not too sure, man. And again, if he's not in it, like all I say is Burden six and then- You need someone I'm else str- with him. I'm struggling to see- uh, 
they're saying Luke Keery from Roosters. Yeah, that, that, they'll He's say they've got that today. Yeah. Yeah. So there's it, not a lot of imagine, options. Imagine like a Sam Walker at number seven. He's Queensland. Oh, fuck yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That yeah. would have been perfect. Luke Keery, Luke Keery. No, well, why did I think he was uh, no, I actually thought from I New said South Wales? I, thought I said it today. I thought he was New South Wales. That would have been perfect for us. Oh, Look, if Bird and Luke Keery play together, I think it might work. I don't know, I'm not too sure, but Bird has big bombs, right? I want to see that like in the game. Bird and Seven. Worst case scenario, if Hines not available, burden seven, and, and then you get another six. Nah, 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 stick with him. Too yes. much of a gamble. You know, I wouldn't no be way. surprised if they get Cody Walker in. Even th- that's why the the season he's having in Rabbit That's Rose, why Gus he, is like, you'd be surprised. Yeah, like, yeah. If, if, we, we don't case, know. We have to wait and see injuries, when they announce the I lineup. I think it has to be Cody Walker. If there's no oh, option, when do they? He's playing yeah. halfback right now for yeah. Rabbitohs. I think next so. Week. If it next has week to be done, he'll it? come in. Yeah, next week or two weeks. It'll be three weeks before the um. When June? June. Uh, no, I think it'll be two weeks. Though. Isn't it June fifth? I think yeah, on the Wednesday night. Oh, no, yeah. no, it won't. It won't. It'll be not this Sunday. It'll be released next Sunday. Oh, okay. So, so again, Sunday should be if there. everyone's available besides Cleary, who are you putting five eight and halfback? I would say Burden. Burden definitely on the and list. Maybe give give Luai another crack. You, you give him so? another yeah, crack. Yeah. So who's Burden and Luai together? Points. I don't know. That that wouldn't work. Oh, you're, you're gonna have to points. Who, have who to. else would you put? There's no one no else one in the league. Well, if it's a minor calf injury, then I think it should be fine. I think maybe Burden and. and I feel uh, if Hines was not g- was to get selected, yeah. I think they're gonna just not pick him because of that Origin performance he had last year. Yeah, yeah that and was I feel a he got under put under the bus. Yeah, against he was moved into center. And he's never yeah. played in his entire career, uh, and he just he, it'll be unfair. I if he think get I think we've lost this series before it started. Yeah, I, I think Big it's chance, over. Man. Oh. Yeah, I, I feel no, like there's hope. Unless we do what the Queensland team did in twenty twenty, uh, yeah, predict. worst team, like, is like the worst yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. this is going to be considered the worst team ever because yeah. yeah, all the injuries. injuries. Watch, watch, bro. I think what I'm, I think we will lose because I think. Queensland have built for this moment. 2020 mm. was like their worst period. And I think they built for this moment. They got a great coach in Slater. But for Blues, I think we're building again. Yeah, Which I think is a right. sad thing. We've had the strongest we're, we're team want, for yeah. like three years. We can't still exactly. beat the Queensland squad. And, and it reminds me of back, embarrassing. It reminds me back in from 2006. So that's when they started losing every year. Like eight, uh, years. New South, eight years in a row. Eight and oh. And that's when they got their momentum back. But then they lost again. Look, I'm going to go Burden six. Yeah. And then Hind seven. I think that's... Burden has to get in. If he doesn't get in, yeah. I don't know what else he has to do to get in because he has been one of the best sixes this yeah. year. I, I don't think I can't find anyone well, else. Look, look there is Luke Curry. Yeah, hundred percent. There's, there's Luke Luke Curry from Roosters. And Dylan Brown's been good. Dylan Brown, yeah, nah, Dylan Jam, Brown's in New Zealand. Six, he's been up there. Yeah, yeah. Nah, uh, to be honest, Lewis had his chances and. Yeah. Look, I was impressed with him against the Bulldogs. The the control he brought, yeah. even with yeah. that clear, he was, was very good. good. I got to give you know props to him. Yeah, yeah. But again, I just think it's a new New South Wales. Take and the chances of putting Burden yeah. and Nico Hines in. Give them a crack because Clear is out. So, Look, yeah. mate, I think if Michael Maguire is gonna like put the proper halfback and fullback, uh, I mean f- uh, halfback, five sorry, eight. five eight. I'm gonna say Burden and Luke Curry. You okay. need new fresh faces. Not you bad, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I think Luke Curry can step up oh, the game. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, well, he's been playing very good this year too. Yeah. As you know, what happened against Cronulla Sharks and Melbourne Storm? That incident, the Simbin incident, yeah. that, that was really the, shocked my mind. Like, how that, the that hell was, was that disgusting, a Simbin? Like, yeah. That was not a penalty. Someone's that like, was not somebody a penalty said, at all. This is the first instance of touch football. In yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Look, that has to be the worst decision ever in NRL yeah. history. Yeah. Like that. First of all, he wasn't looking at him. Exactly. Second of all, he wasn't even charging him down. Exactly. The guy's leg touches him. 100%. And now um, there's a thousand dollar early guilty f- uh, fee he can pay, yeah. but he goes, no, I'm fighting it because he, he of course, he should be fighting it because he has done nothing wrong to get a sim bin, let alone a penalty. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. He with He didn't that. do anything wrong. The, the leg just went straight into his body yeah. by accident. Exactly. There was nothing this, into it. Are they are they trying to um, you know, tag along with this consistency thing that the fans are saying? But like maybe who was the referee? I, uh, to us, I won't. Is I can't he, remember. I think. I think he's trying to buy into that consistency thing because, like, uh, yeah. I think he's trying to make it consi- make a consistent call. Where if another ref was to, you know, officiate that game, he'd call yeah. the same thing. I think that that's what he's trying to do because I can't really wrap my head around this. Uh, like, how was that a call? How was that a bin? That was not a bin. And Harry Grant was shocked. You can tell Grant's like, face. He's like, what? I'm really trying to n- not have a Gus moment yeah. right now on 100% yeah, yeah. footy. Ex- yeah. so I'm really trying to stay calm about this, but but this game is disgusting. Like, it is. This is a stupid a lot of bloody balls. game. This, this game has turned into touch football. And yes. in, in about 10 years' time, this game is going to be- Touch football. This game's going to dissolve in thin air. Because the way it's, it is going right now, 
it's it is no turning back now. It's very hard for them yeah. to turn this game around yeah. because when you have big heads like Phil Gould, yes. you know, talking down on the game in a way, yeah. uh, you know, bro, it's 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 tough. It's tough to see how is this a bloody call? How? But I'm really trying. I'm really containing my anger just, about just this. Just relax. I I'm very passionate about right. that. Look, we all because agree with you because for the past since the start of this yes. season, it's right, disgusting. we've been seeing bad calls, and this has to be one of, as you said, one of the worst calls I have ever seen I in agree. my life. I agree. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of bad calls. We've seen a lot we've of bad seen, calls. We've all seen it at the stadium. Like he touched calls. his leg. I know. Didn't and even he didn't touch. Didn't just, do nothing. Just was going no, his could, way. You exactly. could say, as we said, he didn't touch his leg. The guy's foot touched his exactly. leg. Exactly. He his, was just- His foot got stuck in right in his what chest. Is he, what is he supposed to do? Stop before he touched his leg. I know. Like, the bloke, the no bloke was in a running motion. He ran straight into his leg. Call 100%. it call it the way it is. Brother, if you, you pull any one of these legends, these these legends who, who poured their blood, sweat, and tears into rugby league, the ones who are dead, they'll be turning in their grave right now about yeah. what about what the league yeah, has yeah, become. Yeah. React to it, yeah. This is disgusting, but bro. Get, get these idiots out of the game. That's my point where I said last week that I feel the the referees are making decisions where the ones that aren't a penalty, it's like a it's like they've went against the the book or the rule. Where, for example, the Grant situation that's not a sim bin, but when you look at the uh, Aiden Caesar incident with the hip job, that was a sim bin. That was, that was that, such a dangerous tackle. That was straight hip and job tackle. Un- that was full show. It's like they flipped the books. It's, it's like yeah. the, books. the ones that are clear obvious sim bin. They're not sim binning. The ones that aren't a sim bin, they're giving. It a, I just feel yeah. right now the refs are in a position where they don't know what to do. I think they're just making calls on the. I think the they're making without and knowing. And, the and don't the, tell the me, Billy Slater. I I said it. Yeah, as I know, much I as we respect him, but yeah. but man, that guy was wrong. Yeah, yeah like to wrong. say to say, oh, the abuse is bad. Okay, but hell, bro, hell on the weekend when this happens, how do you want me to stay calm? How do you want us to stay calm Look, as fans, bro? We we want a clean, fair game. How is that a bloody? How is that a call? How is that, that a sin? Being I don't, I'm, bro. I'm not a Melbourne fan, bro. And I'm, I'm getting pissed at this, bro. God. God help me if this was the doggies yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, imagine a doggies player done that, they'll get sent in straight away off the off of the course. bat. That's why you know what I mean? again what Slater said. Yeah. Again, in, in, in Queensland, State of Origin, if a call was to go he, like, against him, yeah. do you reckon he's going to like be quiet? He's going to have exactly. a say and say, that was such I a bad call. I want to hear Billy Slater's thoughts about this. I that's really do. That's his and That's his team, mate. Team, mate. Exactly. That's his teammate that he that's played That's important, I think. Yeah. In the bunker system, that was the ref's decision and of yeah. course the bunker system. But I think it's very important that they get legends of the game to be in the bunker system because yeah. they James know- James Graham said it. Did he yeah. say that? Get, get, get a coach, get a coach, get a player yes. and get an actual yes. uh, official. Because they Those. know the game. They know what what the rules are compared to what the refs and, do. And they yes. know, for example, they know how it feels to be on the field. Okay, now nah, this guy can't stop at this pace. Yeah. They know what it feels like. It, what James Graham said is a perfect point. But we again, with this decision, like these refs, can we call them refs? I think they're like random people just ch- chopped into- They're making their job own fair course for themselves. Like it's just People wrong. that are put into do a job, yeah. do a good job, but these refs aren't doing yeah. anything good exactly. to help the game. They're ruining the game right now. 100%. And this is the worst I've seen NRL refs ever. In a long like time. Last year, yeah, we're last giving year. them props, yeah. how good they were. You know, with the new rule of the hip drop, the amount of sim bins that yeah, we're getting yeah. again. And we were all happy with it. Why? Because of the consistency. When you okay, you know what? Hip drop is a sim bin, yeah, it's yeah. fair enough. High tackle is a sim bin, fair enough. But now it's, Come, it's a mess. Everything's touch football. everywhere. Touch exactly. football. It's a, it's a touch joke. football. But boys, I've said it so many times on the podcast. The bunker system, I've had it. Needs to go. Needs, Needs to go, <laughs> man. I'm being dead serious. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they first bring it out, I said, what the hell is a bunker system? Never heard of it in my life. No, look, it's a good thing, but I they're know using it, is a good it wrong. Thing, but they're just making they're it worse. Make, they're making it worse. It's and a good thing, but, but like they're making it yeah, worse. Yeah, but like with those mistakes, what, like what happened with Harry Grant, that, that wasn't- All right. Yeah. Tell me this. Tell me. In the Harry Grant situation, if that is now considered a sin bin, what was he supposed to do in that tag or in, in that in that situation? In that was, he, was he supposed to duck his head under his leg yeah, and run exactly. under him? Yeah. Is he supposed to he was leap just over? To run off, is like. he supposed <laughs> to le- is he supposed to leap over his leg? No, what is he supposed to do other than run that straight path? Tell me, you as, can, if an official's watching this right now, that referee, whatever his yeah, name yeah. is, I don't know his name. I don't know. Tell me, what was Harry Grant supposed to do in that situation? He can put his and head get up back and to bump, me, like uh, slap the ball down. Get back to me. The emails in the description. <laughs> We could talk all day yeah, about this, but David Fafita now, he signed for the Roosters. You know, there was a lot of talk where he's going Dragons or yeah. um, the Panthers were heavily Th- There was a lot of duels actually. He um, chose the Roosters yeah, on the um, for a bit more money. Yeah, There's rumors, I'm hearing rumors that 
they've also the roosters doing their dodgy deal about they've also giving him giving him a car alongside with this deal to make sure he comes to the roosters yeah yeah which you're not allowed to but you know the yeah. roosters they'll we, get away we try with to it. do it yeah, yeah. yeah. We try. everyone does it exactly yeah. so um yeah to be honest i'm i think he made the wrong call i mm. think panthers you're gonna win the premiership 100%. Roosters, we don't know if they win a premiership. Exactly. You know, yeah. we don't know if they're not guaranteed one. Exactly. For him, I can't believe he's turned down the Panthers. The yeah, biggest, I think the best a, team in the comp right and, now. And I said it last week that you know when, when we mentioned about all those deals that they <coughs> gave him on the play. So <coughs> Penrith actually gave him eight hundred fifty thousand yeah, a season. A season, yeah. But Roosters gave him a multi-million uh, dollar contract. In total, he's going to be earning at Roosters. He's probably going to get eight more, eight hundred k more. Yeah, so, so he's probably getting like one point yeah, two, exactly. one point one. I lot. think I remember it was two point five million at Panthers and three point three million at Roosters. So he wow. took the Roosters. He deal. took the bigger payday. Yeah, he's so, like, they were saying that he might go to St George as well. But now, now since today, he, they're, they're he came out saying he wanted finals footy. So already we knew that's for feeder. Go to Roosters, but that's a. For Just Fida as a player, if he was at Panthers, bro, yeah. I think, again, imagine him working with Cleary. That would have been such a damaging Cleary. duo. Not just Cleary. Brian yeah. Toto, Taylor yeah, May, it's incredible Sonny Taru- oh, Taruva's gone tight. And like Sammy said, I think you're guaranteed a trophy, a premiership at yeah. Panthers. Roosters, again, we, we haven't seen the best of Roosters since 2019 when they last won the premiership. That's right. Against and I think Canberra, for Fida, yeah. look, he, it, it's still a good club to go to. The history, it's a big club. Mm. But for me... Panthers is a much attractive option than Roosters. Again, maybe he's looked at Roosters' last uh, performances, last three games, four games, and they've been quite impressive. You look at Crichton, maybe. But look at Panthers' last three Again, Panthers, years. exactly. Three, know, three, three P's. Money like talks, P's. he's going to get nearly a million dollars extra than he is at Panthers. I know. So again, like I said, money's probably why he's joined Roosters. I just feel he's chosen the wrong club. Yeah, yeah I think maybe, so maybe he's chosen the right club. Yeah, no disrespect to Roosters. They could win the premiership next yeah. year. They, they, they have the team to win a premiership. But I just feel if you want to guarantee yourself a premiership, you go to Panthers. Look, I think it's, look, if he has some sort of connection with the club, like he's loved this club ever since he was a kid. That's a different story. That's a different story. Even if yeah. Panthers are winning. Like I know for a fact if Bulldogs offered us and Panthers offered us, we choose Bulldogs. So if there's some sort of connection to when he was younger and that's why he's chosen yeah. them, fair enough, okay? But <laughs> if it's because of the money and- I think that's what it is for, yeah. You chose money over a premiership, like, and he Come said on, he wants yeah. to win a premiership. I'm not saying Roosters <laughs> won't win a premiership, but they haven't won one since 2019. But and Panthers have won three, three in, a in a row. Yeah. And they made four grand finals in a row. Because we've said that's David true. Fafita deserves a big move. Yeah, and he's got it. And now I'm afraid Tino's the next to leave the club. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's Bulldog the perfect one him. for dogs to get him. And where's, gonna, where's Tino going to go? I think Bulldog should poach him. I think dogs, yeah. We need a forward, man. You know, to be honest, honestly need a forward. If Tino does leave... Yeah. I think Bulldogs is the only place because we got yeah. the money to just give him 100%. And I know Bulldogs had, we've had our moments with Tino, but he's yeah. such a good player. No, he is. You know, bring him in, everyone, may, you know, it's a perfect fit for him to come Bulldogs because we of need course. that big forward. And he had that rivalry with Matt Bird, Matt but Bird. now they, they play together yeah, yeah, international so level. If so Tino's free, man, I, I take it. If Tino comes, definitely Bulldogs on the list. That's yeah. the first thing on the list. The only thing, I the only thing, if he was to come, yeah. clean up his act because I don't like it. Exactly, it's yeah. he's, he can be very aggressive. Yeah, yeah. He can get into fights where he doesn't need to. Yeah, you don't want to so be in that position. That's yeah. it. He can fix up, but I'd love him yeah. at the Bulldogs because you know he's one of the best props in the game. Hundred percent. But with David Feeder, like we all said, it's a wrong move going to Roosters. Yeah, like I think it's a wrong move. Man. I think like, we all would have chose Panthers. If oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Eight hundred fifty thousand seasons. Probably, like, come he on. Probably thought they they've got it all. Yeah, right. yeah. He probably thought they've run. They've run yeah, but he has to understand that. Penrith won yeah. like back to back premiers like three years in a row or four yeah. years. Like, why would you go to Roosters, bro? Like, no, no. It's they already got all the main players. You've got to give team. respect to Roosters. No, I know, but team. they got the main players yeah, already. It's not like there's a big, a big deal. It's not like he's chosen Para over Roosters. Are yeah, a good team. They are, but and it, it's still a very good move he's done. But I'm just Panthers would have been the better move. Yeah, yeah look, I, th- I agree with uh, that. People have their but, opinions um, on that. Um, final thing. Oh uh, yeah, one more thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to talk about. The Pengai situation. Uh, I, do, I know we've we've oh, raised yeah. this up mm. many times. I saw that interview. I've, we've I think I don't know how long how many times we've talked about this, but this we've really so this really times. pissed me off. And I and I know our, our boy Joy yeah, feel, feels a lot said. feels yes. has a lot of lot to say about this. But he went on to two GB. I think yeah, I, I don't well, know where was or Triple M or yeah, anyway. Triple M, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like, this is what he said about this, about yeah. him coming back to the rugby joke. league. No disrespect to anyone on the bottom teams, but if I go back to 
to a bottom team, then people will say, I haven't learned my lesson. Uh, I need to go to a team where it's not about the money, it's about the system and the coaches and the players. Now, this is this is my thing about this, all right? I'm, I'm going to get passionate now. Yeah, now yeah. I'm going to get off my head <laughs> because now he's blatantly said, I wanted to leave the Buddhas because I didn't like the coaches, the system and the players. That's what he's basically saying because he, he doesn't want to go to the bottom, the bottom eight that. club. And and this is my second issue. Why hasn't the Daily Telegraph, why hasn't all these media mainstream outlets, why is not the, the headlines, Tevita Pengai um, blatantly, as I'm saying now, blatantly says, you know, he lied about, you know, not wanting to play the game, but about or getting like forced into the Pengai game. Pengai walks out of Bulldog's contract. Like walks like out of Bulldog's yeah. contract, you know. Because yeah. uh, he got forced. Uh, Tevita Pengai cheated the system. Yeah. Why isn't that the headlines? Why is the headlines Pengai is moving, potentially moving to Melbourne, potentially moving here, potentially moving there? Why isn't this getting talked enough, man? Like, like I we called this, man. I, I said, this bloke's going to get knocked down and come back to rugby league. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what's happening. But why isn't this the topic of discussion? I don't understand. Because yeah. this guy truly should shouldn't even play a day of in a NRL game, yeah. ever again. So wait, he, look, any good system, he still won't perform. I think he's a very inconsistent player and I think he's got this mindset when things are not going his way or the teams is not performing, he just doesn't want to give his, his 100% effort. Wait, so look, he's an, he has the potential to be the best forward in the game, but sorry to say, I think he's an average player. Look, I think he with is. Payne Guy Jr., they also told him, so you're you're going back to rugby league, and he laughed it off. He goes, "Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming back to rugby league." And he goes, "So this is like the, the 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 sport you love." And then he goes, "Yeah." Like, and then here we are, a few months ago, him saying, "I fell out of love with the sport. I've been forced to play." He just yeah, made that, the that was the word forced. Story, that was the word a soft story just How to get everyone that? on his side, and he's just. I, I wonder what Gus Gould is thinking. Th right th that's now. what I'm he's saying, man. That every club he's been to. Not Bulldogs, yeah. not Broncos. Here's the problem. He's the, I think his he's the attitude problem. is yeah. really bad. That's why I don't think the coaches sell him in the team because he's got an attitude 100%. that you look at the kids that want to play for Broncos or Bulldogs when he was at the club. They have yeah. the attitude that they want to start because they love the club. He doesn't love the club. And, he and loves it, himself. And when he was in form as well with Brisbane, he was playing the best as well. But when he came to Dogs, he, he just felt forced. Like I, Yeah, I, but I what, where, where did that come from? Yeah. No idea, like, he, he admitted that going to the, the Broncos training, Kevin Walters was persuading him in a way and we, we speculated yeah, that yeah, yeah. something was going on there <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. look now he's coming back but just to break it down it's not about the money it's about the system and the coaches yeah. no, so sorry. in ba basically he's saying um i took the i i i went to the bulldogs for money um i didn't trust in the bulldog system and i didn't wow. like cameron serrato yeah. that's what it says to me as a, wow. as a doggies fan that's again for me that, that's I, i've said man. so many times on the pod about panga panga how much i like him and what he can really do as a forward but what he's done has really disrespected the I NRL think itself, not the just NRL. Borders and that. Yeah. He's just respected all the bottom eight teams for the last three to four years. Like, 100%. put it this way, Craig Bellamy signs him. Yeah. How do I know he's not going to go do ballet uh, in, uh, <laughs> the next month? How, maybe maybe he's got a passion for ballet. Yeah. Well, no, no hate on the guy, but mate, mate like- Steam cleaning mate, team. Mate, you're, 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 <laughs> you're just-, you're just but, him. It, but in all seriousness, man, <laughs> In all serious, you're ruining your yeah. own reputation. 100%. This is how you ruin your credibility. <laughs> like, yeah. he, he was the most damaging forward, bro. Like he was, he yeah, was, he, he was up there, man. He was, yeah, he was, was getting up there. Just now lazy. he's just, he's, he's a joke now. He's a la you're lazy. I'd hate to say it, but the blokes a joke. Like you can't just keep everyone you can't keep changing clubs. Yeah, everyone you can't do that. Like that. I respect can't do that. Everyone, you know, everyone has their own dreams they want to fulfill, and yeah. At that moment, we could say, okay, look, fair enough. It, it did look like he fell out of love in the game yeah. because he was not playing good. But yeah. now what I don't respect is you lying to us Bulldogs fans, to the Bulldogs, to the NRL, and, and now Brisbane you want to come, well. and everyone, yeah, and yeah. now you want to come back. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't all. make no sense, bro. Look, because when you become a footy player, you got to put the hard yards in from, at a young age when you're playing as a junior. Like then you got to go through the club ranks and then you got to go to First whatever grade. SG Ball Cup and all the other clubs and that. But bro, now you're saying like, oh, it's just, it's, oh, it's not about the money. And he's like, it's all excuses, bro. It's all excuses. It is excuses. It's all excuses. It he just doesn't want to play. Last, this is the last time I'm bringing up. Imagine, yeah. he, you know, if, imagine he goes to the Melbourne Storm. You know, Craig Bellamy will give him the biggest like punishment of a lifetime. And as he'll I said, actually rip his ass. Yeah, like, and as I said. Sorry <laughs> to say, but he'll rip his he's ass. He's using NRL as a plan B. He's, yeah. he's got a safety net with the NRL. Yeah. And he goes you know to I mean? boxing too. Like he only had one fight. Yeah, he got knocked out. Because, he got, exactly. Yeah. Because of his name and... 
because of his name, Pango Jr., he's a big name in the, mm. the NRL. And that's why- Doesn't want to listen to coaches anymore. Yeah. Just so it makes it's you it's look like a fool, man. It's all and if he, like like said, if he goes to, yeah. if he goes to Melbourne, he's surely going to listen to Bellamy. 100%. Yeah. Well, look, anyways, that's oh, a wrap up to League Talk and we'll let Anthony and Bill take over with Combat Talk. It's all right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Combat Talk. Anthony, let's get the big news out of the way. Our boy, George Kambosis, unfortunately got defeated once again against guess, Vasily Lomachenko. Yeah. Uh, gets defeated via a body shot in round 11. Yeah. Um, not much to say about this fight other than Kambosis got mauled, got dominated. He actually did, yeah. Oh, man, it, was, it was sad to see. It was, it was that much of a gap that the American commentators weren't even commentating the fight towards the I end. Know. They started talking about random stuff. Yeah, um, I know. But just to put in perspective of how wide it was, he only landed four only landed four jabs in that whole fight. Yeah, um, because Lamashenko bro actually like targeted him and yeah, he had so, a lot, he had a lot of body shots on him and he had a lot of good combinations too. So yeah, um, so just to break down the yeah. fight in general first, we'll talk yeah, about yeah. the um, just a summary. So Lamashenko, what he did well against Cambosis was use his jab, use his. Uh, unorthodox way of fighting with his uh, with his angles, you know the, the the classic Lomachenko in using his angles to you know yeah, which um, I saw, to yeah. to you know deceive his opponent. Because um, once he once he I saw one combo where he threw he threw I think a two piece combo, then yeah, went on the right back, side, and yeah. then Cambosis was like, "Where is he?" Yeah, and then he landed him with a left hook. Yeah, I which saw is, that. Which was classic I think, Lomachenko. I think that was in round three, I think round. Yeah. Four. So yeah. um, which was classic Lomachenko. He did that from rounds one to eleven until it got stopped. Yeah. Cambosis did have an Bit advantage in. Yeah. Did have an advantage an, an advantage, advantage in hit, round yeah. three, yeah, yeah. where he hit him with a good body shot, which is one of his best shots all night. Yeah. Um. But to talk about the stats yeah. now, this is body shots that landed for Lomachenko. Um. So he got seventeen landed body shots. Uh. And then to Cambosis, so he threw one hundred and seventy five to Cambosis forty wow. body shots. Um. And then his jabs, 70 to four jabs wow. to, for Kambosis. Um, power punches, 105 for Lomachenko mm. to only 36 for Kambosis. Um, that is the gap in yeah. that fight. That when you, like, they say styles make fights, but you can tell they, they're two different styles that didn't really work in the fight. It wasn't exactly. competitive at all. Exactly. And what now for Kambosis, man? I said this from when this fight got announced. If he if he loses this fight, which he did, he's out of the elite level, man. He yeah. can't... I, look, he lost his belt. It was for the IBF um, championship. Yeah. So now Lomachenko has that under his belt once again. He's got a world championship under his name yeah. at the age of 36, mind you. And he's still he should, fit, man. Exactly. He's, he's still, still fit. fit. He should be depleting right now. I know. Um, so now uh, Kambosis, I feel like... I, there's not really anyone you can give him in the yeah, elite level because exactly. I feel like they just walk over him. You know, Haney walked over him. He did. Lomachenko walked over him. Um, it's it's sad to see. It happens to a lot of great fighters. Is uh, I don't know what it is for Cambosis. Maybe he needs a new trainer, new coach. I don't know. Yeah, we um, don't know. Right. There, there has to be a change in his training. training. I can't I can't talk for how he trains, but it seems exactly. like he trains hard. But I feel like there needs to be a drastic change mm. for him to get into that elite level once again. And now for Lomachenko. Man, I'm hearing Javante Davis wants that smoke. Wow. So if you set up Javante Davis versus that, that's Lomachenko, gonna be, that's going to be good. That's fight. when you say Stoles make fights. That's going to break records. It's going to, that, that will be, that, I, I don't know how that fight goes, to be honest. I don't really don't know who wins. The, It'll be like a 50 50. The unorthodox yeah. soul of uh, Lomachenko and his, mm. his angles and in the power of uh, Javante. Yeah. You know, uh, I think really this is a fight to watch. Yeah. Um, if uh, if they do, if if it ever if happens, happens, yeah. If it, happens. if it does happen, it'll be a massive. What do you fight. what do you think happens to Cambosis now? <sighs> Look, to be honest, he's he's on a losing like record. To no, be no, honest, he, not, not like he won his last fight he won before the last this fight, one. Yeah, but but that was argu arguably a loss. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But for now, for Cambosis, I don't know where to, like I don't know where you're gonna put him in that direction. Like, do you give him one more fight, or does he um? Like retire, we don't know. We yeah. we can't say the answer, and that's up to him. You know, me considerably, I reckon like give him one more fight, yeah. see where that leads to. You know, but but who are you gonna put him against? Yeah, him? that's not, it. Won't be anyone in the top ten, to be honest. Exactly, you need someone probably in the lower division. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, as much as I love Cambosis, of course, bro. and um. Because I went to Melbourne for this guy, and I wanted to watch him. And, he and I know him. you're a big passion fan. Yeah, I, I love Kimbo. But yeah. I, he's got to come into terms that he's he's not on that level, man. When, you, when, when you get when you get dominated by Haney in the first fight, and then yeah. again in the second fight, and then get dominated yes. against Lomachenko. Yes. Now we, we've actually watched it. Me and my mates that's, watched. That's what I'm saying. Kimbo like, and Haney's fight. That's Haney was all over him. It was all over him from round one all the way to round so twelve. So he's got to he's got to make a decision. I know he's, yeah. he's under top rank. 
uh, ESPN's top rank. So yeah. they, they got that. Um, uh, who's the uh, promoter? I think Bob Arum is the promoter. Yeah. So he, it's up to it's up to him who he gives him next. Yeah. Uh, but if you're smart about it, you don't give him anyone in the top 10. Yeah, you don't want to put him in the top 10. For division. now at least. For yeah. now. You've got to get someone maybe like between 10 and 15. Maybe position. maybe give him a Tiafema re rematch. Yeah, Tiafema maybe. Lopez versus Cambosis too. I'd watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it too. But, but we'll see what happens. That could man. be in the works. But um, that was just a shame to see in Perth, man. Yeah, I know. That's uh, disappointing, bro. Great Australian you know? boxer, you know, right. get defeated like that. And and not just that, a lot of you, like even the Australian fighters too, like they've lost Alex Vaganovsky, Robert Whitaker, and now George Kambosis. Yeah, it's, it's and tough Aussies right now. And as well. Exactly. That past weekend against... Now, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it is, we'll see what happens with Kambosis down the line. All the no, best, no. man. I want to I wanna watch him fight again. Uh, that's so. for sure. I but so. um, onto UFC, man. Now, Dana White has said he's going to stop... UFC Apex, you know, so like all the fight, fight nights. nights in the Apex he's going to stop fight Vegas, nights happening yeah. in Ape in in the UFC Apex in the Performance Institute uh, Center. Yeah. I think that's where is it. That's where it is. In, in, in yeah, the it's in the Apex Center in, in Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. So he's going to stop that. He listened to the fans. The fans have been asking for that since COVID finished. The whole yeah, COVID yeah. scenario was done. So originally, UFC Apex, for those of you who don't yeah. know, was put in place. Because of the lockdown restrictions, yeah. because of what was going on going on in the world at the That's time, right, yeah. um, Dana White didn't want to halt, you know, any fights and stop yes. any events. So he went to the UFC Apex in Vegas, yeah. uh, made his own events in there with no with no crowd. Yes, but now when it's all said and done, when COVID's gone, yes. um, the fans have been asking and asking for fight nights to not be in the Apex no more. It has and to be, be at arenas. So at arenas, yeah. So what? I think I know what Dana was, what he's trying to do. So, like how he said, how all the fans said, no more of those um, Apex inside the Octagon, yeah. or whatever, in Las yeah. Vegas, in that center. I think it's better now that Dana White put all those um, rank fighters, like, from, like, you know how the people started coming from uh, different promotions, yeah. like, from, you know, from the uh, local promotions, yeah. MMA, so they can put him into the Octagon. But in the, like, how can I say, the co-prelims and then the uh, main prelims, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Before the main cards, you know what so I mean? So we'll put him in there, you say? Yeah, like, as in, you know, all those new fighters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, as in the, the new upcoming fighters? New upcoming yeah. fighters, so they put them, like, you know, the co-prelims, uh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. then... Uh, the, the early prelims. Yeah, the early prelims, Early yeah. prelims, yeah. All, so these you're young, saying, all these young fighters. So you're saying to, for them to fight in the apex still? No, not in the Apex. So not, not in the Apex. A arenas. To, to, and arenas yeah, to get so the, the crowd. Before people start coming in, yeah. into the arenas, you yeah. know what I mean? No, no, no. That's, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the thing around this. So, yeah. like, um, Joe Rogan Joe, Joe, Joe Rogan was against it. He wanted oh, he was? UFC fight nights to be still in the Apex. He said he put a – he put – funny funny thing enough, like, um, he put the Apex over Madison Square Garden and T-Mobile Arena. So, he put the Apex – he said fights are way better in the Apex as a um, – as a viewer, to watch it in the yeah. Apex with no crowd, then watch it at a packed out Madison Square Garden and T-Mobile Arena, which was crazy for me wow. to hear and watch him say on so his podcast. Say like so he was saying that it's better to have it with no crowd in the Apex than a packed out arena. Why? That's what I'm saying. Like I don't understand why. I think I think because but there is people. You know why? It, you know yeah. why I think he said that why? because you hear the punches, you hear the leg yeah. kicks, you hear the snaps. That's why they you hear it, the yeah. fighters talk. Like the famous Max Holloway. Um, yes. Uh, quote: I'm the best boxer in the UFC. We heard that because there was no crowd. Yes. Um, yeah. So I like. I, I don't know if did that happened in the Apex. I don't know if he said that in the Apex. Max I'm Holloway. not too sure. No, I'm he must sure. have said I it. He, a, I think he, he must have said it in the. Uh, no, no, he did say in the apex. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he said in the apex. He, no, he must have said so, it in the arena for so sure. It, no, no, I think it was in the apex. So it creates moments like that. Yeah. That's why Joe Rogan loves that. But I, 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 I agree with Joe Rogan on a lot of things. But yeah. I don't agree with him on that. Dana yeah. White. That's a great move by you. You're listening yeah. to the fans. That's what the boss should do. Listen to their fans. Yes. Um, yeah. It's only gonna. It's only gonna. Um, and back to your point. Yeah. It's only gonna make those. Fighters that are upcoming, yeah. you know, get used to that arena environment. Yes. If, if, <clears throat> if you know, like, if that is a, a future star in the making, you know, yeah. that could be the next, we love to say, the next McGregor. <clears throat> you know, how are you going to build a character like that in an empty Apex <laughs> yeah, arena? That's right. You're going to build a character, you're going to make him comfortable with crowds yeah. around them. Even though those prelims don't really have a lot of people, but exactly. just the environment is going to get you yeah. used to it. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of that, Jacob Malkoon even said it as well. Um, the last fight when he won against that Canadian fighter, yeah. Um, a few weeks ago He said I'm done Like doing it In the apex as well Like he, now he wants to be In the crowd Like with the arenas You, you love you love the buzz You, you love, the, you the, love the, the noise You want to hear the booze You want to hear the cheers You want to hear everything It's that adrenaline rush I think of what course, it is right. Is a lot of these fighters They don't get the same rush That they get Walking out yeah. into it 
packed out stadium. Because Jacob Jacob was used to it in the yeah. Apex for the last yeah. three years since COVID now, when yeah. he started his, his UFC career. Yeah. But now he's like, I want to hear the dr- like the adrenaline, like I want to hear the the um the noise. It's, it's a different, it's know? a different um that, that's yeah, what no UFC. One, we that's don't know, UFC we don't know that feeling. They they yeah. only know that feeling of walking out to a packed out stadium. Hundred percent. You kick into a different gear. It it, it, it all it all like it, it's it, it becomes like a, almost like a dream for him exactly you know, to walk out everyone chanting your name everyone screaming 100 percent. and and like how you said with dana white that how like he wants to scrape it off too even like when they do the ultimate fighters so like you know when they do it in the apex yeah just for that time being but when it comes to like you know how the olden days when you had like all the best coaches and then he puts all the fighters yeah. when it comes to the end they put them in the arenas that's how it should be like yeah. whoever wins the whole season that's in the um in the arenas, that's yeah, how yeah. it's meant to be. And I think they, they're not going to c- totally get rid of the apex. I yeah. think they're going to um, use that for Dana White's contender series. Yeah, yeah. And I they're think still the going to ult- use that. And I think yeah. for the ultimate just for fighter, that time being. Yeah. Uh, so I think th- that's the plan. Yeah. But for like actual fight nights, no, nah, I don't think it's happening. Nah, the anymore. fight nights needs to be like co- uh, co- uh, I mean, early prelims, yeah. prelims and main event. That's how it should be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So, but I think it's a good move that Dana did. So. But no, no, no. It, it, it is. 100%. Uh, it's, because it's, they want to see sold out crowd. Because yeah. when people come in, like I told you, they want to see the early fights before the main event like begins. You know what I mean? Yeah, they want to see 100%. And yeah. it, but They're like, paying their money for it. and they like just, just regular fight nights. Because a lot exactly. of the regular fight nights are not happening at 100%. arenas. It's happening in the Apex. Yeah, that's There's, right. It's going to be a good thing for fans too. 100%. Um, now, one more thing before we wrap up Tommy. combat talk. Conor McGregor just broke a record for the highest UFC gate ever. Wow. So he's gross for the McGregor Chandler fight, twenty million dollars, and it's not even June yet. That is the and it's a month away. He beat his own record. I, I think <laughs> I think second was Alvarez and McGregor. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I think it was seventeen million dollars. Now he's just broken twenty million dollars in in gross. Yeah. Um, for for the for the gate, uh, so yeah. It's, it's, what are, what are your opinions on that, man? It's just, it's just, bro. It's crazy. I was just reading that news. I'm like, bro. No, I this, saw the article I'm, and I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, why is he uh, like making twenty million straight away? It's, it's and McGregor, the fight hasn't even started it, yet. And a lot world. of people love to say like McGregor's lost, he's lost his fans. But man, this this really proves him wrong, yeah. bro. It, Look, he could still prove, got he could, the pull, man. He still does. But yeah. bro, I told you so many times. I don't want to repeat myself, but. We have to wait and see when the day comes, like when the fight begins. Yeah. Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor. We want to see if Conor McGregor brings back his old original. Sorry, my bad, my bad. What so is that? second place was uh, um, McGregor and Khabib. It was seventeen million. Ah, uh, seventeen million. So it wasn't okay. Eddie Alvarez. So okay. it was seventeen million. That was the highest up until this point. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's it's crazy. And it hasn't even fought yet. Like it's, uh, it's not away. even June. It's like, it's June 29th. That's end of the month. Like Next that month. again. Like that just shows. Like yeah. there was talks. Uh, there was talks that people like UFC don't need McGregor anymore. They don't yeah. need him. That, and in a way, they don't. But when you're yeah. putting, he's still their money maker. He's still their cash cow. McGregor is still breaking records like that, mm. bro. Like it's gonna it's gonna rise up even more c- coming up closer to the fight. You know, probably it could go to like 30 mil. We we don't, we don't know, man. Because like end of the day. When you get into that octagon, when you're when you're bringing your A game, I think Michael Chandler is going to shut him down. Like yeah. I, I know Michael Chandler is going to shut him down. He's, tra- he, he's been training and, super and hard. I've seen him. Uh, he has, and he has, yeah. and we'll get to that close to the fight with our yeah. predictions. But if McGregor now, if he yeah. wins this fight and he 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 gets the fans believing again, he could break this record. He could, he and then he'll come back again for more and fights. Say he say yeah. he wins another title, he could. You know, bro. Oh, uh, look, I don't no, know about title, but, but, but I'm just, just saying theoretically, yeah. like hypothetically, yeah, if he yeah. does. Do if he does enter his second prime, yeah, yeah. bro, he's gonna break even more records. <laughs> like, pro- yeah, bro, yeah. again, it was uh, th- this is why I brought it up because a lot of people were saying he's done. He yeah. doesn't bring the same amount of hype and buzz. Look, and some money people, I agree, and some around, people I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, no, no, I'm saying as yeah. in, he doesn't. People are saying he doesn't bring the same amount of hype, the same buzz, energy, and yeah. money. Yeah. So that's why this is just proving the haters wrong of in course. a way that he still is the 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 face of the UFC. Yeah, of course. So, but, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, if he does win against Chandler. He will get a couple of fights, but then he'll probably retire. How yeah. old is he now? No, he's uh, 36. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think maybe yeah. give him two, three fights or and he retires. Yeah. But if Michael Chandler beats him, what happens then? He's done. He's, then he's done. Yeah, he's done. He's, he's going to leave UFC for good. Yeah, but I, just, I thought I'd bring well, that up because look, I found that shocking, yeah, exactly. man. I, I found that just truly unbelievable. That's yeah, just the McGregor aura. About that, too. the McGregor aura is still here. I oh, know, but anyway, some man. people, yeah, but some people still but believe yeah, it. Yeah, that's a wrap up for combat talk for this week, and now for some football talk. That's astonishing! Oh. It's all right, now time for some football talk. First of all, Arsenal 
one Man United zero. Look, to be honest, it's not like how it would be in our household. You know, arguing, getting caught. Yeah. That 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 um your team won, for example. Like for me, there was nothing in this game at all. Um, just watched it for the sake of it. And to be honest, you know, with the team we had, the lineup we had, we put a fight up. Um, in that second half, especially, we were attacking a lot. Just can't finish our chances. Arsenal just probably just happy with that one new win, but again, they weren't they weren't good at all. I think they were just missing something, not the Arsenal we've seen throughout this year. But again, they're gonna be a bit conserve um, conservative. You know, they don't want to concede that goal. They want to, you know, because they trust their defense. <laughs> Arsenal trust their defense. Yeah. They know that if they get that goal, they can go the whole game without conceding. And already that's eighteen clean sheets for Arsenal. But um, before we move on to us, like your team, I'll just. Talk a bit about my team so then you can delve deep into Arsenal. Um, Man United, again, we're in a position... Again, I've said the season's over. We're playing for nothing. We could still sneak in a Europa Conference League, but do I want that? I just feel maybe it will be better if we have no Europe, less games, focus on our, our, our performances in the Premier League, in domestic cups, and then somehow that might build confidence, get us more wins. Um, but again, I was... Happy the way we bounced back, you know, we, we just lost 4-0 against Crystal Palace away and it's just good to see a little bounce back. We didn't win, of course, and with the team we had, you know, no Varane, no Lissandro, uh, Luke Shaw, our Bruno Fernandes, Rashford, Casemiro playing centre-back. So the team was everywhere. We didn't expect to win, um, but we didn't expect to, you know, lose by one. We thought we'd get smashed by Arsenal. So... I'm happy with the team. Now, Arsenal, how did you see that? Uh, I think this, to be honest, I think it was one of our uh, worst performance in 2024. You can see um, that the, t- the, team, the, the team performance wasn't to the level I wanted, wanted it to be because you look at uh, United. Defensively, we could have exposed you so many times. Like Every time we attacked you guys, there was like a mistake or... Uh, like Andre and Anna saved you guys. Like the amount of saves he made was incredible. And I honestly think if we were attacking a bit more, if we were more aggressive, the score could have really opened up. But I think the, the team was a bit cautious that we just wanted to play a defensive game, get that one goal and just grind the, the win and grind it, ground it without the whole game. And that's what we did. And look, the result is all that matters at the end of the day. The performance doesn't matter. I, even if you win 1-0 and it's the, the worst performance, which I think, like I said, is the worst uh, this year for Arsenal. But yeah, we move on. It, it's a 1-0 win. We just wish and we hope for Man City to lose against Spurs on Wednesday, which, look, for me, we always have this argument about every game I've saying, I feel this could happen, this and happen. And that's the point. For Arsenal fans, we're never going to get these moments. Last two years, we've been competing for the title and we want to have that hope. We don't want to just say, oh, City, City's won and that's it. You you ruined the moment. You ruined that feeling of enjoying this title race. So I believe Spurs is our final and last chance because the last game of the season, they've got West Ham and City will not drop points there. And you look at Spurs, <coughs> they haven't lost a game at all. Sorry, City have not scored a goal in the Premier League against them since I think it was because including Wembley, they never scored and including Waiha Lane, they never scored. So it's been a long period of time where they haven't scored at their home ground. So that's what I'm leaning on and that's the confidence I'm hoping and the hope that I think that Spurs can get a result. Draw or defeat, draw or win, both of them would suit us. We just need them to drop points and it can honestly help us win that title. And fingers crossed, man, fingers crossed. I think Tottenham is the biggest chance <laughs> you have, and I think the la- last chance you have, a proper last chance um, for you to stay in, yeah. you know, win the title, because I feel if it goes to the last day, Man City are not losing against but West Ham. But you look at it. They're not I losing. told you. I, I know they're the not going to lose. And the Aston Villa two years ago. It might be tough. Yes, it might be tough, but they but won't they lose. But they will win. But I'm saying there will be, again, last days, that you know the pressure is going to, even City, the greatest City team, um, not, so not the greatest thing, but again, the QPR one and even two years ago when they Villa, the pressure on the last day is a different level compared to the pressure they're going through now because they were losing 2-0 in both games and they caught up and it shows even if they're 2-0 against West Ham, they're going to get the they're gonna get the result and win the title. But I'm saying it's going to be still tough, not only for City, but for us 
City is such an experienced team and we're still learning, we're still developing. So we're going to be in a, a big amount of pressure against Everton. And I feel Everton's a harder task than what they have against City because against West Ham, sorry. Everton is a I'm very formed. strong, they're on form, a very strong defensive, defensively team, second most clean sheets in the league behind us. And it just shows under Sean Dice that perform. They've been such an incredible team this year. And if it wasn't for their points deducted, that would have been top nine right now in competing, trying to get that European yeah, spot. Look, I, as I said, I feel <laughs> it, 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 I feel if City win Tottenham, they win the league. I don't see them dropping points against West Ham. It will be tough. I think Arsenal probably smash Everton <laughs> at home. You know, they need the defence are behind them. So, yeah, I feel this is a do or die right here. In my opinion, I think it's that Tottenham match. And I think Tottenham can cause an upset. So, yeah, it's heading to the last day. Once again, always the best feeling when it does. Um, but, again, nerve-wracking when it's your team you're supporting. Now, let's talk about Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, who aren't in the title race. But, again, they're in contention to play in the Europa League. You know, for one second, for one part of that season, you thought Europe's out. They're going to finish mid, mid-table. mid But, again, they're showing some fight. They they haven't lost in... I, I, it's been Their a while since record is incredible. Yeah, it's been a while been since 2024. It's been a while since they've lost the game. I'm pretty sure, and they're starting to build confidence, starting to f- finally gel and play the way Pochettino wants them to play. Now, again, with next season, can they continue this? With me, the problem is I think they can continue, and I think they will have a better season. But we don't see a team who gets a new manager really consistently play good football. Like the only team we've seen is Man City under Guardiola and Liverpool under Klopp. We're starting to see Arsenal now. But usually the teams like Man United, we've changed a lot. Chelsea, you know, Spurs, they have that period where they're doing good. They fall off and then they do good. But then after that, it completely goes down to shambles. So it's just a good period for Chelsea. Yeah, I think Chelsea, they're in a good period. And I think next year they will improve. But again, I'm not convinced that you know, this is going to be a long-term thing. I think Pochettino is going to get a period again where he's going to go through a bad patch and they sack him. And again, that's that's what my point is. You only get a few teams that stick to a manager for many, many years. Guardiola, again, being one and Klopp being one and Arteta is going to be one for sure. You talk about, again, I agree with you because are you going to look at this season being a success? No, for sure. Chelsea, it, it's been an atrocious season this well, year. Well, in a way, yes, because <coughs> with the players they signed, mm. They've signed a lot of players, but they're young. You know, a new manager. I think a lot of them were expecting top six, and that could be achievable, you know, in two more weeks, uh, or two more game yeah, match games, whatever. My point is, again, if they were to get top six or Europa League or Conference League, in a way, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. But overall, when you look at the performances they had, it, it doesn't, like, yeah. making European, tri- like, European competition, I think it doesn't, that word... Um, it papers over the crack. Pa- that's it. Papers over the crack. It doesn't. It, it does paper over the crack. But if you look in the bigger picture, Chelsea are a long way out. Yeah. But what they've um, they're improving produced in twenty twenty four, they've stabled the defense. Uh, attack has been incredible in twenty twenty four. They they've they're pushed themselves a lot of goals. up to like the top seven attacks in the competition. So they're building something special. I think. Uh, we just have to wait next year. It's a different sort of pressure when you're in Europe. You're going to be playing more games. This year they haven't played enough games without European football. So heading into next year, I think there's a lot of signings I feel they need. Let's talk about the keeper. I think he's a good keeper, but I think if you want to step step onto that next um that next big step, Aaron Ramsdale is probably the best option they need. Yeah. And I think Arsenal would sell him to Chelsea. I think Ramsdale needs a move. He's not going to stay at the club and him joining Chelsea would be an incredible move. He's a great stop shot stopping keeper he's great with his feet and he's an experienced uh keeper and that's what they're missing i feel Look, yeah tiago silva's leaving i feel the defense has gotten better but i don't feel they have that strong big defender like it's important that you not always sign the big world-class plays it's important to build unknown plays sometimes and less experienced plays and build them for the future just like we did we did with gabriel saliba what liverpool and city well, did Chelsea with have done that because that's what they've done they've got but a lot of young players without tiago silva where's the experience they, coming from in the defense now they've got to buy that big well-known big center back 100 percent. reese james is going to get injured next year for sure they need a new right back they've got that guy gusto but he's not 100 percent fit sometimes he seems to come off and out of the team so it's very important so Keeper and right back for me is their most important position. Left back, I'm qu- quite happy with Cucurella. I think he's a great 
addition left back. Who's yeah, so they, strong they do need cha- they do need changes on that. Let's talk about young players. You know that deserve a move to a big club. There's a lot of you know players out there. You know Michael Elise, Eberich, Eze. There's a lot of players and. Um, Eze has been linked to Man United as well as Elise, but I just don't feel right now is the right time to bring those players in because I know for a fact with where we're going now, the their confidence will go down unless miraculously, you know, our, our full team is back. We're starting to play the way we did on the Tenarchs first season. Then yes, it'll be a good buy. But I think right now we got to steady our ship. We've got to try and get the structure right before we bring him in because we don't want to destroy another young talent. So personally for me, I'd love them to stay for Palace for another year just so then we can sort out our stuffs and then we poach them for the next year. But if I was to say, you know, where should these players go? I think Liverpool should get one of them. I think Liverpool need someone like that. Um, again, with Klopp leaving, want to try and build something new. Eze and Alisa could be some good buys for them. Arsenal, maybe, you know, an Eze could fit into there, you know, um, you know, Georgina signed a new contract, but to get some, you know, fresh legs in, young legs in, you know, Emil Smith Rowe looks like it might not be his, you know, his time at Arsenal might be coming to an end, you know, replacing with that. So I think them two, Eze and Elisa, are probably right now the, the biggest youngsters that have a lot of hype around them and that still haven't got that big move. So with them, I think a top six team could poach them. Because you could see uh, Crystal Palace... <coughs> About um, Eze and who was the other guy you mentioned? Um, Elise. Elise. Elise, okay. however, however you pronounce it. Every, he's been injured this year. He's came into the team. He's um, been off injury. But you can see every time he comes, he produces, he contributes to the team. He scores goals. He scores assists. Every time he's returned back from injury, he's on the score sheet. So he's, I feel, a better player than Eze. Eze is an incredible player. Don't get me wrong. But I feel uh, Eloise, however you Elise. pronounce it, Elise. I think him at the, the the position he's in right now. I think he's developed under Palace, and I think Palace have done an incredible job on both these players. And like you said, they're the two most brightest players right now in the Premier League, and they do deserve a big move. Whether it's in the Premier League or whatever league, they deserve a big move because they've worked hard. They they're, they're showing their talent and how good they are. But if I was to choose a club in the Premier League specifically, I think as they would suit a club like Liverpool, and even. Uh, Oh, Elise, Elise, so sorry, Elise. He, even I think Arsenal. I don't think w- we should sign them because I think our squads develop. I think we do have a strong bench. Are they going to come to a team where they're going to be on the bench? Look, Arsenal. You're competing for the league. Maybe they'll accept that. It's a big club, big opportunity. They'll accept that. But I think right now, Liverpool is probably the best best place to go to, especially with Klopp le- leaving and they're on a sort of a rebuild. Yeah. Um. Finally, look. Um. Premier League's been one of the best leagues and is still the best league in the world. Um, a lot of the teams got out in Europe, Aston Villa, Man City, Arsenal. You know, it, it hasn't gone right. Man United got kicked out of the group stage. So is the Premier League still the biggest team, uh, biggest league in the competition? It still is, man. Personally, for me, it is. You know, we, get, we had Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool f- battling for the title this year. Um, Bundesliga had Bayern, Bayer Leverkusen. La Liga had... Barcelona, Real Madrid, Girona at one stage. But again, there's something about the Premier League that still and will continue to be the best league. You know, it's just the excitement of, you know, the lower teams beating the, the bigger teams. The you know, unknown. The unknown, yeah. You just don't know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, United got smashed 4-0 by Palace. And it, you rarely see Bayern get defeated by, an, uh, by the lower teams, rarely. You rarely see Real Madrid get beaten by, you know, um, the bottom teams. Pichet have won the comp, uh, they won for like, I don't know how long, eight years in a row, or something like that. It, it, uh, Serie A has a lot of good teams and that is the only team that I feel there's not a guaranteed winner. But with the league, it's either Madrid, Barcelona. Bayern, um, with Bundesliga, it's always Bayern. And you look at it like, in the Premier League this year, of course, in the last four years, you, you could say a lot of fans outside the Premier League will say it's a farmer's league because Man City have been dominated for the last four years. But if you look at it in the last two decades, it's been complete different teams. Arsenal, United, Leicester, Chelsea, Liverpool, City. So many different teams winning it. So many upsets during those two decades. It's an incredible league. And yes, this year, we haven't succeeded in Europe, in Champions League, Europa League, Conference League. Things happen. 
But over in the last decade, two decades, we've always been in semi-finals and finals. United winning Champions League, City. It, it's still the greatest league. And you mentioned about Serie A. I feel that's a competition where, like you said, lots Anything of big happens, teams yeah. and there's a lot of upsets. When I see mm. the score, see the highlights, there's like Juventus losing, um, Roma losing. So that's a, a league that's quite competitive in a way. Bayern Munich, 13 years um, yeah, winning the league. It just shows... Bundesliga isn't the best league. This is the first time that they haven't won a league. Le Leverkusen have won it. Uh, La Liga, it's always between Real Madrid, Barcelona, and maybe, and maybe Atletico Madrid. It's just the same thing happening in that league. And Real Madrid, they haven't ha even had a big upset this year. It just shows the, the difference of leagues and why it's still the best league in the world. And yes, again, like I said, it hasn't been the best year. But it still doesn't change that it is the best league and will forever be the, the, the yeah. best league. Hundred percent Premier League, yeah, is will always be the best league. All round, they've got the best players. And look at the players we always, yeah, like the, the players Boyna, we attract. Harlan. Not only that, the players we attract, like not there's big names in other leagues. But I'm saying, how many big names do? Again, most of the big names go to La Liga, I guess. Bundesliga, there's good players, but there's not a lot of world class players. The world class players are from Bayern Premier Munich league. or Dortmund, a few bits yeah. here, but. In the Premier League, there's a it's lot of world class players. They're scattered. Lots of players want to join Premier League because it's the greatest in the world. Yeah. So that's an advantage and it just shows when you're attracting big players, big names, it just shows yeah. it's the best in the world. You, like ha you got Harlan, uh, De Bruyne, you got <coughs> Rashford, you got, uh, not Rashford, but you got good top, qu top quality players. players and and that's what makes it more exciting. And even when you get, you know, the upcoming stars, you know, and them battling out with the best best comps and then they go and <coughs> win the games, you know? And again, with Leicester winning the comp, that that is, I think, the best way to describe what the Premier League is. Yeah. You just don't know what's going to happen. And that moment in particular is the reason why it's the best uh, competition in yeah. the world. But yeah, that's a wrap up to Football Talk. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll move on to with the boys to wrap up the podcast. All right, guys, that's a wrap up to the Touchline Podcast, episode 75. Make sure you hit the like button, comment down below and subscribe. And don't forget this week, we're going to be vlogging Anthony skydiving. <laughs> it's going to be a, a, I can't a, a wait. day to remember for us I and know. I know for you. Because, we, of, because when you are going to be with me vlogging, then you're going to say to your head, I wish I can do it like him. Nah, you know? I, don't yeah, I, I know you think so. I know you should man. do it. But maybe maybe so. you should do something in the sky. Like something like a prank, like like a dare. Maybe get like a paper, write something like say like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll do something. Hey, let us know in the comments. Let what us should know. Anthony well, let do us know in the sky? To, uh, what should Anthony do <laughs> once he's how many feet in the air? Uh, 15,000. 15,000 feet. 15,000? Oh, 15, he, he knows. <laughs> he knows really. When Anthony's 15,000 feet in the air, let us know down in the comments what he should do as a dare. Just let us know. Yeah. That's it. Wrap up episode 75 and we're out. See you later.